OK, we're going to model a chimney that flows smoothly from a pitched roof into a circular shape. It's a really nice design. All credit goes to Sol Kim Studio. They create this kind of geometry, and I thought it'd be a great exercise to practice on. We've got this interesting house with roof strips, kind of like a contour, and a paneling system too. I'll show you an easy trick to generate those panels quickly. And of course, we're also going to model the chimney wrapping nicely and coming right out of the pitch in a pitched roof. As always, every command I use will show up on the screen. So it's easy to follow along. If you're new here, this is part of our Rhino architectural modeling series. We model different projects to help you improve your skills step by step. All right, let's get started. First thing, we'll start from the base of the building and build up. Let's expand our perspective view. We're going to create a box. Just type box. Let's set the first corner point to zero, the second corner or width to seven meters, the length to 24 meters, and the height to five meters. Now we're going to split the top face. I'll use the split face, select the face, then go from this midpoint to that midpoint. Now for the pitched part, hold down control and shift, select the middle edge, and let's move it up around five meters. For the rooftop's flat area, we're going to chamfer these edges. So type chamfer edge, we'll set the chamfer distance to 0.6 meters. Then select this edge and press enter twice. Now the rooftop here extends a bit from the base. So that's what we're going to do next. We're gonna use extract surface. Set copy to no. Select those top faces and hit enter. Once that's extracted, we'll use scale 1D. Select this part, set the scale start point at the top, set scale end point, and set the scale factor to 7.4 meters. We'll do the same thing here. Just select this one, enter, to repeat the last command, and set the same 7.4 meter scale. Next, we're gonna make the supporting structure underneath. Let's start from this front face. I'm gonna run the split face command again, Select the face and split it horizontal like this. All right, now we'll use the inset command. Select this face and this one, then press enter. Set the inset distance to 0.2 meters. Once that's done, I'll run up edge. Select this border and this border, hit enter, and we'll extrude that down a bit. Next, we'll extract some surfaces. Uh, now we're going to merge those into a single face. I'll use planar union. Just select the new frames we made and hit enter. Uh, let's give that some thickness. I'm using offset surface. If the direction is flipped, you can just reverse it here. For the thickness, we'll go with 0.2 meters. Let's clean up. Use cell C RV to select the curve, then press delete. All right, now let's copy this frame a few times under the roof. To make things clearer, I'm gonna move the roof 30 units to the left so we can see what's happening below. This side is basically identical to the opposite one. So I'll hold down control and shift, select this face and delete it. We'll mirror this side, select the first face, the second one, and the frame, then mirror it from the midpoint, like this. Okay, let's quickly see how many frames we need for our support. Select the first frame, hold Alt and drag to make a copy. Let's do about five copies. All right, five divisions look good. Let's even out the spacing. Quick tip here, I'm gonna select all the frames like this, and use the distribute command. We want to space them out evenly in Y direction. So I'll choose the Y axis. One thing I like to do here is change the display mode on these faces so we can see through them. Helps get a better feel for the space. So I'll select the faces I want to adjust and use set object display mode and chose display mode to ghosted. Now we can see through the frames, through the panels or faces. 
and we'll start filling out the space even more. Now let's bring the roof back. Select it, and we'll use Undo Selected. Then from the drop down, choose Gumball Transform. That'll move it back to its original position. Now let's scale it a bit in the Y direction so it covers more space. All right, let's move on to the chimney part. We'll use the tube command. First, turn on Smart Track. Hover over this point and this point, then click at the midpoint. Set the first radius to 1.7 meters, the second radius to 1.5 meters, and the height to 10.5 meters. I'll move this tube a bit to make sure it sits inside the roof structure. All right, now let's work on blending the tube with the roof. We'll extract the surfaces and try to blend between them. Use the extract surface command. Make sure copy is set to yes, then select the exterior part of the tube and hit enter. Now let's isolate the tube and roof so we can see clearly. Let's make sure the top and bottom of the tube match the roof height. Hold Ctrl plus Shift, select the top edges, and run set PT. Uncheck X and Y, and then click on the top of the roof. Now repeat the same process for the bottom. If you check this reference image, you'll see the chimney blends into a conic shape wider at the base, narrowing toward the top. Let's make that. With the base selected, I'll use the gumball and scale it out in the Y axis. Yep, just like that. Once that's done, let's switch to top view. Here in top view, we're going to draw a polyline about three fourths of the diameter. And we'll use this to cut through the geometry. I'll select this part and press delete. Now we're going to merge these two surfaces together. First, let's extend the cut section all the way until it intersects the roof. So I'm using the extend surface command. Um, set the extend type to line, so we get a straight extension. Let's extend the other side as well, just like that. Now we'll clean up the extra bits. I'll select both surfaces and run trim then remove the extended parts we are need. Once that's done, while the surface is still selected, we'll use the join command. Now, let's smooth out the edge where the two surfaces meet. We'll use the fillet edge command. Just double click to select the entire edge loop, then press enter to see the initial result. That's what it looks like by default. Now we can adjust the radius, maybe make it smaller at the top, and a bit larger near the base. So I'll run Fillet Edge again. This time, choose the Edit option and select the fillet we want to adjust. Turn Preview to Yes, so we can see it live. Let's have more handles. Start by adding handles along the midpoint from left to right. Then add two more handles to the left and the same number to the right to keep symmetry. Make sure to place them in the same and opposite positions. Once that's done, press Enter. Now we'll select both sets of handles at once, left and right, and adjust one side. Just select the control point and drag it up or down like this. It will update both sides automatically. Then repeat for the bottom ones too. For this part, we'll increase the radius. All right, that looks good. I'll fine tune it a bit more, but you can keep shaping it by adjusting either side. It looks fine for now, but feel free to refine it further. Let's go back to the full model using the show command. Okay, now let's move to the next part. We're going to add a kind of segmented division on top of the roof. We'll use the contour command for that. Select the first side of the roof, then the second side, and click on the first corner for the contour start point. Let's switch to the right view, hold shift, and set the contour direction straight upward, just like this. All right. For the spacing, let's set it to around 0.19 meters and press enter. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and extrude them upward using the same distance, 0.19 meters. Now let's select the result using cell last. Then we'll use offset surface. Set the thickness to around 0.2 meters and press enter. 
that should be fine for this part. Let's take a look at the result in rendered view. Now you can see how those strips are wrapping around the chimney. Looks clean, right? Gives us a smooth and really nice result. All right, now let's clean up some of the extra geometry. Use cell C RV to select the curve, then press delete. I'll also de delete I'll also delete these extended parts and I'll get rid of the base surfaces too since we don't need them anymore. Okay, that looks fine. So the next part is creating the curtain paneling system. Let's select this part and scale it a bit in the Y direction so it aligns with the middle of the frames. Explode it to get individual faces, then go to the bottom section and unselect the base surface. Now we're going to cut the vertical support from this surfaces. I'll use the split command and select the support geometry here. Once that's done, press enter. Now let me show you a quick easy way to create a curtain paneling system. Click on the corner of the grasshopper icon and select grasshopper player. You can download this definition file from the pinned comment and open it. First, it'll ask you to select any planar surface. Let's say we want to apply it to this section, so I'll select this surface and also the one at the bottom. Then press enter. Now just follow the instructions in the command panel. You can click one of the preset values. For example, click five for five U divisions. If you want a custom number, click the undo button, then type your value. For this example, let's type two and press enter. Now it asks for the V divisions. Let's set this to two as well. Next is the inset length. Let's set it to around 0.04 meters. It feels too thick. You can always hit undo and change it. Let's adjust it to 0.03 meters instead. The next option is whether you wanna flip the direction of the curtain panels. If you need to, you can just click the flip option but the original direction works for me. So I'll click the undo option and press toggle, then press done. Then to confirm you're finished with options, press done again. That's it. Now it automatically creates the curtain panel system for us. I'm going to apply the same process to the side faces as well. So again, run Grasshopper Player, open the definition and select the faces you want. I'll pick B side services here. When you're done selecting, Press enter. Now follow the prompts. U division, two, V division, two, inset length, 0.04 meters. Flip direction, leave it as is. Now you can apply the same process on the remaining surfaces. Okay, now let's create our floor slab. I'll select the bottom faces, scale them in the X and Y directions and extrude them downward just a little bit. Now hold control plus shift, select the bottom of the chimney, and we'll use set PT. Uncheck both X and Y, then click the bottom of the slab to align it. All right, that's our final result. And this is a quick render I made using the model we build so far. If you found this helpful, give the video a thumbs up to let us know you want more tutorials like this. We'll keep making more. Also, check out the tutorials you see on screen you'll definitely find some useful techniques and modeling exercises. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.